All right, so this shit's been bothering the hell out of me with this Floyd Rose Schaller system that I put on the Devil and Guitar. So this is the nut. All right, not a big deal. Pretty simple. Looks like any other Floyd Rose double locking trim system, whatever. Now, I took one of the blocks and kind of sanded the finish off of it a little bit and rounded the edge just a little bit not much so hopefully if it focuses that'll be really really nice all right let's see if it focuses on there so i ended up just rounding it off they're pretty sharp and now this if i put it in here it slides back and forth real easy comes right out now you can't put these things in any direction but what you're supposed to. So if you stick it in the wrong way, it doesn't line up right with the angle that's on the inside. And if you stick it in the way it's supposed to be stuck in, that curve that's in the nut itself matches with the block too. So here is one of the other blocks that I haven't done anything with. And I'm just gonna kind of like put it in here. See if you put pressure on it, when you lock the string down, you know, it's not coming out and it's kind of a pain in the ass to get out same thing with the other one here if i put this one inside here too same thing doesn't come out so i'm kind of wondering if between the finish and the sharp edge that is on these you know the sharp edge that's on these things is causing the string to break so if this is going in and it's sitting tight as it tries to push the string into the V over here, it's cutting it instead of pushing it. Now, with the string retainer that's on there, which will be on the other side, you know, this side of the nut, getting that angle right as far as getting the strings inside of here is really close because the headstock isn't tilted the way that most guitars that have a locking double locking system on them would be. I looked at my Jacksons and I looked at my Ibanez just to kind of get an idea about you know how the setup is and most of these when I loosen up the nut or loosen up the screw for the uh, block that's on a nut these are it's loose this is how it's supposed to be they, they don't sit on there and get stuck like this one's doing so I'm figuring I have a tool in the garage which is a grinding well it's a, not a grinding wheel it's more like a metal polishing wheel but it also removes a very very little bit of metal okay and I'm wondering if I you know hold this clamp this down with something and stick it on there and kind of just go over that wheel like this if it get that edge off of here like I did on both sides of this and because this does have a sharp edge on there it's not like it's a, a dull edge it's it's a square sharp piece of metal if i clean it on both sides round it off a little bit i should probably be able to get this to work the way it's supposed to work instead of having to possibly you know get a different nut um this being a shaller made in germany hopefully made in Germany, at least that's what I was told. Uh, anything else would be, you know, something from China. And I really don't want that. Kind of would like to use what the original equipment came with and get this thing together. So we'll find out. All right, so here is the grinder. Now, this is an actual grinding wheel. This one is not. This one is kind of, it polishes metal really nice, but it also has a grit inside of it where it will remove a little bit of the metal so I can round it off. Problem is, is I can't hold the phone and do this at the same time. So I will be right back. All right, so I'm back from the garage, and instead of holding these with a pair of pliers and basically marring up the nice finish that's on the tops of these, I use a pair of vice grips that have a plate now this is not 
uh, hand, homemade. This is actually store bought. You could buy these. They got to come in different sizes as well as different widths. What it does is great for doing body and fender work when you're trying to put two panels together and you want to hold it at the seam where the two panels come together at the bottom and do your spot welding. Works out really good. Also came real handy without damaging the finish on this. So what I've done is I polished the ends and rounded them off a little bit. So now they're not they're not gritty, they're very smooth. That wheel that's on the grinder, um, if you put a lot of pressure on it, it will cut metal. But if you just want to like clean rust off of screws, nuts, and shit like that, it works really, really good for doing so. So each one of these has been polished, and each one now slides right out of the nut itself. So each block on both sides have been taken care of. What I was thinking is maybe when the, get on this side, on the high E side, is because this was binding inside of here the way it was, and see I don't have to take my fingernail and try to pull it out now. The way this was binding, if the string wasn't sitting completely flat, which is due to the um, uh, string retainer, and on this thing here, because of the angle of the strings, the angle of the string and the string retainer, it's still going to come out a little bit off to an angle, especially on, on the high side of the strings. And what's going on is I'm thinking that when this was closing on that string, because it's binding, it grabbed the string, and instead of pushing the string down in the nut, it was cutting it, kind of like a scissors would cut. And this is going to be pretty good. Maybe I can use this, and I don't have to use some Chinese crap on that thing. All right. All right, so let's see how this is going to go. I've got the string retainer in. The nuts in. I have a 15, I believe a 15 thousandths on this side shim, and I have a 16 thousandths on this side to give a real nice, you can see that real nice action height at the first fret. So I've got it somewhat tuned up, not quite there because when I put the string retainer on, that's going to change the tuning, so I'm going to have to readjust it again. But what you want to do with a string retainer difference between a string tree and a string retainer is the string retainer will pull you don't want to like change the angle of the string going through the nut what you want to do is you want to get this side right here all the strings basically laying right in that curve that's on top of the inside of the nut where the locks go on top of so what I'm doing right now is I'm just checking for any type of movement which I see a little bit right here so that means I have to bring this down a little bit Check here. Well, this side wasn't bad, it's just the high side that's really bad. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of somewhat put this thing in tune. And if you have the, the string retainer in right, your tuning should not change. Your tuning should not change if your retainer is incorrect. All right, so now that I changed these locks and kind of polished them up on the edges, go ahead and put them in place. See, it's not even getting stuck on top of the string, which is that's what I'm looking for. Put this one in place. Now, there's no order to these. They're all pretty much cut equally, so there really is no like certain way you have to install these or anything else. All right. And you can see the nut is sitting pretty much flush with the fretboard which that's something that you want as well that means that the nuts in flat 
and pretty much even. Because this is basically what's holding me up on getting everything done. It's just a stupid nut. I'm trying to get this thing sorted out. All right, so I'm gonna add a little pressure to it. Give me back my Ellen key, you bastard. E is pretty good. B is good. G is good. D is all right. A is okay. Yep, the sixth string E is a little bit on the high side, so that's telling me. Oh, actually, it's not. It might have been where I was plucking the string from. It's a little bit, tiny bit on the high side. All right, that worked. So if you ever have any troubles where your nut is cutting the strings, all right, now switch over onto this side, get a good look at it. And what was going on was the string might have been uh, catching somehow with the lock block, if that's what you want to call it, and pinching it somehow to where it was cutting it straight across uh, either like a pair of scissors or wire cutters, you know, something was going on with it, but those edges were pretty sharp. Now, she's tits. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. So, let's get into looking at action height here. Now, if you can see that movement, that's like nothing right there. All right, and you should be able to drop tuning on this without having any problems where you get string buzz. So action height over here at the where's my action height? Uh, I had it out. Where'd you go? Oh, it's in the drawer. Action height at the 12th fret. Let's go ahead and look at that. I go by inches. So right now I am at right on top 560 fourths. I mean right on top of it. So it's a little bit like into 560 fourths. And on the high side it's right on the line for a 16th at the 12th fret. The tremolo is level with the body or the Floyd Rose is level with the body over here. I set the pickup height already. And she seems like she's going right back into tune when I go ahead and uh, hit the whammy. So that's, that's a good sign with everything. So right now it's just final setup, intonation, um, and then going over everything to make sure everything is still sitting where it's supposed to be. I'm, tomorrow these knobs are supposed to be in, so that's a good thing too. And I'm really, really happy with the way this thing is really coming out. Really happy. So let me go ahead and zoom out on this thing. There you go. See a little bit of the striping on there. All right. So not much for me to do right now, but just finish up the setup and uh, call it good. Bad thing is, is I'm going to have to loosen these guys up to finish up the setup. <laughs> oh well. Got dust on here. Got a little dusty in this room. And uh, yeah, this is going to be great. So it's looking at like a guitar now. Um, Trust rod cover. You should be able to get a uh, Allen key inside there with no problems. I'm setting the neck at a 12,000th. Some people like to set it at 10. Uh, shit, some people like to set it up to like 20. I know, what it was it, Jackson says to set for 20,000s when you have a uh, 
uh, a Floyd Rose or a Florida Rose Special on it, yeah, I don't do that. All right, guys, this worked out. This worked out great.